Good day, brothers and sisters, and welcome once again to the CMI School of Christ. And we're going to continue with our classes, The Great Mercy of God. And today for this class, I wanted to look at just uh, verses where the word, the phrase, went up, appear in the scriptures. And in our last class, we looked at the, the phrase, went up, Strong's number 5927, Hebrew word Allah, and forgive me on my pronunciation. On that, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right or not. Allah, something like that. And uh, so we, we looked at, in our last class, we looked at that in a few different definitions uh, and lexicons, Bible di dictionaries and Bible lexicons. And so for this class, I wanted to because I also had it, and we never got to cover them in our last class, I wanted to just look at verses where this lexical form, this, this uh, <clears throat> of the word right here, went up, Allah in the Hebrew, where it appears in the scriptures. And that's all I did. I did a, a lexical search, uh, lexeme search of that word, Allah, basically the dictionary form of that Hebrew word. It's kind of, I, I think it's the equivalent of a Strong's number search. But I did that, and I just looked at several different verses. I mean, a slew of verses came up in the Old Testament. I'm talking like a lot. But we're not going to look at all of them. <laughs> but at the ones that I did look up, and we're not even going to cover all the ones that I did find, uh, for this class, but I, I wanted us to look at some of them because it just gives us a, a more rounded view, I guess, a more rounded, listen, natural understanding of this term and why I said natural understanding because that is exactly what it is. Uh, we come to the scriptures and with our minds we get this natural understanding first. We have a natural knowledge first. And that's why I, I really try to emphasize to take that which we've received and understood naturally, processed naturally, computed naturally, presented to the Holy Spirit, that He can use whatever He desires to take from what has been presented, from what has been shared, from what has been heard, from what has been seen, to prepare the ground of our heart not so that we can have a natural understanding of these verses or of this word or of this anything else, my brothers and sisters, no. But that our hearts would be directed and come unto the very person of Christ. That's it. That God would, would make known his son who is in the midst. That's, that's the end of all these studies. That's the end of all these classes. That's the end of every single preaching or teaching, I believe, is that the heart by the work of the Holy Spirit would come by the ability of God, El Shaddai, under the person of Christ his son. This is, of course, first at the moment of new birth and then for then in the knowledge of God of the new birth. So <clears throat> that's why I mentioned that. And so I want us just to look at uh, some of these verses. And even with, with the phrase, I'm, let me just go ahead and read that, that verse again that got my attention. It's uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 22. Then he, that is God, finished talking with him, with Abraham. And God went up from Abraham. And, <clears throat> excuse me, God and everything of God rises above. God and everything of God rises above. God and everything of God directs the attention, the full attention of the heart above. God and everything of God brings the heart, brings the soul first, and then the heart in knowledge above. 
But once again, it is not just above as other religions of man would, would bring man unto like a higher level, a higher plane. No, 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 no. No, with God, with the living God, it is above unto the person of His Son, Christ Himself. And that's the difference. And that's, that's the difference. Is that we do not come to learn a teaching or a message. We come to know the Lord Himself, who is a person, a more real person, my brothers and sisters, than you or I. A more real person than any person we can see with our natural eye. That is the end of everything. <laughs> to come to a person. <clears throat> and so, right here, and God went up from Abraham. And so, the first verse where, where we see this, Strong's number 5927, the lexical form Allah is Genesis is found in Genesis chapter 2 verses 5 through, th through 6 and it's actually in verse 6 but I wanted to include verse 5 just to give us a little bit of context all right so Genesis chapter 2 verse beginning with verse 5 before any plant of the field was in the earth and before that's a good term to look at before Any herb of the field had grown before there was any seed, before uh, <clears throat> there was any growth. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was, I love this, there was no man to till the ground. Before anything, there was no man to till the ground. And just remember, once again, with Genesis chapter 17, the emphasis is El Shaddai, not man's ability, but God's ability. It goes on, verse 6. But a mist went up, and there's our term, went up, from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And here's my comment. God the Father is the vine dresser. He knows what is needed and he knows what is not needed. He knows that for the results that he desires, he and he alone must be the performer, the doer, the tender of it vine dresser there was remember there was no man to till the ground there was no man to take care of the ground there was no man to do anything there was no man to put forth his own effort in this creation of god right here <clears throat> the face of the earth was not watered or tended by man. Once again, it is God the Father who is the vine dresser. He's the one who knows what is needed, and he is the same one who knows that apart from him, if he does not perform, if he does not do, then what is needed will continue needing. Because remember, brothers and sisters, what is needed is not a new teaching. What is needed is not a new message. What is needed is not a new doctrine. What is needed is not a new miracle or sign and wonder. No. What is needed, listen to this, is whatever it will take for our hearts, for the full attention of our hearts to be drawn and placed upon the person of His Son, that the Holy Spirit may bring our heart in knowledge, just as He has already brought our soul in reality under the person of Christ, the Son of the living God. 
There you have it. <clears throat> I love that. So the face of the earth was not watered or tended by man. I love that. God is the doer. If uh, I shot this out in a tweet a few years ago. How did it go? Um, if anything is done of eternal weight or value, then God is the doer of it. And I actually, <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and read this because I, I, I'll probably be sending this out in a tweet uh, this week. Man at his highest potential, listen to this, man at his highest potential is still impotence in the sight of God. Or is still, oh, man at his greatest potential. I, I said highest, but gr I have greatest. Man at his greatest potential is still considered impotence in the sight of God. Because remember, brothers and sisters, forever, forever, and that is solidified, that is made known, that is made very clear in Genesis chapter 17, forever it will be with man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. <clears throat> all right, so going on. The next passage, or the next verse, where this, this word, Allah shows up, the Hebrew word Allah, or the lexical form, the dictionary form. This is Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, and this has to do with Noah and the flood. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. Now, of course, this is after the flood. And took, and I love this, this is, this is after the flood, after, after God had judged everything that was evil, basically everything that was not his son, judged everything, buried everything, right? The whole earth was buried, and the ark alone rose above the earth, resurrection. And Noah found himself in a new creation, the creation of God. Beautiful testimony. <clears throat> Beautiful testimony. So it's a first creation, the Adamic creation, the natural creation, and right here with Noah, it is testifying of, uh, it testifies of the new creation, who is Christ Himself, and so that's the context, and this of course is when they are now in this new creation, found in this new creation, verse five, oh, excuse me, uh, verse twenty. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every, every clean animal. Took of every clean animal and of every clean bird. <clears throat> and so every clean animal and every clean bird testifies of Christ himself. A perfect lamb without spot or blemish. The only clean, if you will, sacrifice, acceptable, truly acceptable unto God. So, and it goes on. Uh, and, he, and he took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered, there's our term, it's, it's translated as offered, offered burnt offerings on the altar to the Lord. And he went up, or the offering every, of every clean animal and of every clean bird, and brought them up before the Lord. And it came up before the Lord. as a sweet smelling aroma of Christ. Remember once again, God and everything of God rises above. <clears throat> right here, the, this, these every clean, of every clean animal and of every clean bird is testifying of Christ himself, the only perfect 
sacrifice in the eyes of God. The only perfect sacrifice, brothers and sisters, that rises unto God. Sacrifice that rises unto God. That God receives, that God himself accepts his son. Now before you go off running with that, <laughs> my brothers and sisters, the one whom God receives, the one whom God accepts, his beloved son, is he who is our life. Remember, we, we, his body, we who are born again, we are accepted in the beloved. Our acceptance before God is nothing apart from his son. It's not based upon our own deeds, our own merit, what we do, what we don't do, upon our goodness or upon, upon our evilness upon our greatest potential <laughs> or lack thereof. No, it's based upon Christ, His Son. And this is, of course, for us who are born again. If you're not born again, you must be born again. All right, so <clears throat> that was the second verse where that term Allah appears in, in the Scriptures. This next passage, which we, we've looked at before, and I... I I've made mention of it several times, and we've seen it as well. This is Genesis chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. And of course, the context of this is Abraham, God, Abraham in Egypt, and God, by his divine providence, brings Abraham back unto purpose. Now, of course, all this moving around of Abraham, or Abram at the time, is actually happening, I would say, in his heart, with whatever his heart, whatever knowledge his heart is submitted unto. All right, so let me look at, let me bring that passage up real quick here. Yeah, beautiful. <clears throat> I've got to make a little note there to read that. All right, so this is uh, Genesis chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. Then Abraham went up. I love that. Then Abraham went up from Egypt. And I wrote as a comment right here, our life naturally rises because our life is a risen life. Our life, who Christ himself is, is above, not below, among the dead. Once again, the, the two witnesses of the resurrection, there at the tomb, when the women come to the tomb searching for Jesus, what is their confession? What is their declaration? What is their testimony? Why, we know you seek Jesus. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. Okay? So, uh, back to verse 1 of Genesis chapter 13. Then Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him, to the south. To the south in the land. Remember, the Lord, by his divine providence, brings Abram and all that is with Abram back. Now it goes on. I love this. Verse 2, look at this. Abram, Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Okay. Why? <laughs> Why would the Lord insert that in there? After Abram, because this is what it is in context, after Abram, the heart of Abram, because there was, remember, according to Abram's view, natural sight and his natural processing of his natural brain, 
he saw that there was a famine in the land. And in order, in his mind, to preserve life in his household, his best thought, his greatest thought, was to go among the dead. And yet right here, the Lord inserts this. Genesis 13, verse 2, And Abram was very rich, not just rich, very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. I have my statement here, my brothers and sisters. For the one who is born again, the riches of the fullness of Christ are present within the believer in the person of Christ himself, regardless of our knowing. Our, the, the church, the believers, riches is a person who is present regardless of our knowing of him who is present, regardless of our acknowledging of his value, of his worth, of he himself who is present. And I love, I love that. I love that. Once the God of glory appears, everything God ever intended and created the soul for has appeared in the soul, in the person of Jesus Christ, His Son. This is not dependent upon man's understanding. This is not dependent upon what man submits his heart unto, whether that be ignorance, gross darkness, or whether that be Christ, the knowledge of God. No. We do not change reality, brothers and sisters. We do not change the truth. The only difference is whether we are coming to know the truth. Coming to know His Son. Remember, that's what it amounts to. Coming to a person. Not coming to a new lesson, a new teaching, a new doctrine. No, 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 no. No. It is all bound up with a person. And I love that. And we cannot, I mean, the Apostle Paul declared uh, the unsearchable riches of Christ because he was knowing a person. He was not learning a new teaching. He was not learning a new doctrine. He did not, he even says it, I, the, the gospel I preach, I did not receive from man. I didn't learn it from man. I didn't receive it from man but it came by the revelation of Jesus Christ, God Himself making known His Son. That's it. And the Apostle Paul, he says, and I declare this very one who is the true rich riches of heaven, the true value, the true worth of heaven, all bound in a person. And so I, I just love that there. This is, this is after, I'll just use vernacular terminology. This is after Abram screws up, messes up. Nothing has changed in God's mind. He is still full of the riches of Christ, regardless of his ignorance. <clears throat> I love that. All right. Verse 3, and he went on his journey. I love this. He went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel, as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning. I love that. Between Bethel and Ai. Verse 4, to the place of the altar. Ooh, I need to. There we go. To the place of the altar. And to, and to me, even when we read of uh, where it says Noah, where does it say? 
Noah built an altar. There we go, built an altar to the Lord. To me right there, when, when there's the altar found in the Old Testament, basically, uh, to, what, to whatever degree, it is when the heart, the heart is submitted unto basically this, not I, but Christ. It goes, it goes for everything. Not I, but Christ. Not my ability, but the ability of God. Not my will, but the will of God. Not my desire, but the desire of God. Not my mind, but the mind of God. My brothers and sisters, not what I call life but the life of God, who is Christ, who is made unto my soul eternal life. That, to me, is the altar. And so, uh, verse 4, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. I love that. It's like, what's happened here? His heart submitted unto ignorance, and now his heart, by the divine providence of God, is now submitted unto that which his heart, which the Lord had brought his heart to be submitted unto at the beginning, at the first. Once again, unto Christ, the Son of the living God, unto the knowledge of God, the eternal knowledge. I love this. <clears throat> Uh, And there, (laughs) I love this, not in Egypt, not among the dead. No, 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 no. And there, there, where his heart was, where his heart, singular, was submitted unto the knowledge of God, where his heart was submitted unto God, there, above, out from among the dead, Abram called on the name of the Lord. Where his tent had been at the beginning, back to square one, Christ and only Christ. Christ and Christ alone. Now, it goes on, Genesis chapter, we're still in Genesis chapter 13, Uh, I'll read verse 1 again. Then Abram went up from Egypt. And that's how we got to this spot right here. The the phrase went up. uh, Allah. Then Abram went up from Egypt. That's Genesis chapter 13, verse 1. Now verse 14 through verse 18. And the Lord said to Abram, after that Lot had separated from him, lift now, Lift now your eyes and look from the place where you are. Look from whence you are. Northward, southward, eastward, westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make make your descendants, your seed, as the dust of the earth. So that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your seed also could be numbered. Verse 17 Arise, walk through the land. Walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which were in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. His heart, to whatever degree, Submitted unto the knowledge of God that it is not I, but Christ. I love it. <clears throat> automatic response. Automatic response. See, there is a spiritual order. And I remember once uh, I, was, I was sharing uh, in another country, and a pastor came to me. I was, I was sharing with Jacob and how he wrestled with the angel and how he confessed uh, I've seen God face to face, and my life was taken away. Uh, <clears throat> or my life is preserved. And I looked at that word preserved, 
And it can imply kind of both, was taken away and preserved all at the same time. And so after I shared what I had shared, the, this pastor came up and asked me, so what happens first? What, what happens first? Do, is our concept taken away and then, and then we're able to see the truth? Is our concept of what we believe to be our life taken away first and then we see him who is our true life? I mean, our concept is moved out of the way and now our true life, who Christ is, is now in view? And I didn't fully understand at the time, as I, as I do now, and I, can't, I fully can't remember um, the order, or even if I gave him an order, because he wanted to know what happens first. Um, I'd have to, well, I didn't record the conversation, but my brothers and sisters, there is an order what must happen first is God himself must take the initiative. This is a spiritual order it, confessed by Job himself in the book of Job. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Remember one of our previous classes? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. When the Lord gives His Son unto the soul. Well, by the work of the Holy Spirit, the ground of the soul is prepared to be able to receive the Son. And by the ability of the Spirit, the soul is made able to acknowledge the voice of the Living One, respond to the voice, and receive. When the Son is given unto the soul, the condition of death that the soul had been captive to is taken away. Because the condition of life, who is Christ himself, is now present in the soul. Now, with our ignorance, when God, by his same Holy Spirit, prepares the ground of our heart to be able to bear, to bear the knowledge of God, to whatever degree, and God makes known His Son. I mean, Genesis chapter 17, this is, this is El Shaddai. This is God revealing Himself as El Shaddai, the only, remember, only powerful, the only almighty, the only capable, the only able one. When God, by His Spirit, makes, prepares the ground of the heart, so that the heart is able to bear the eternal knowledge of God to whatever degree, then when God makes known His Son, our ignorance is taken out of the way. Our concepts are taken out of the way. My brothers and sisters, our natural knowledge is taken out of the way. Man by man's ability cannot, impossible to, to know God. Anything regarding God and that which is of God requires a miracle of God. All right, going back. <clears throat> Genesis, where were we? No. Oh. Yes, uh, Genesis 13, I was reading, And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, so, uh, then your seed also could be numbered. This is Genesis 13, verse 17. Arise, walk the land in its length, through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. Automatic response. Automatic. This is automatic of something that the Lord has done in the heart. That is, to me, what an altar is. Okay? And once again, it's, it's just a, a huge understanding of not I but Christ. Because the knowledge of Christ and Him crucified is, has been established in the soul in a greater measure by God. All right? So, the next verse, of course, the next passage where we find that Hebrew uh, term Allah, 
Strong's number 5927, is where we've been. Genesis chapter 17, verses uh, 21 through 27, and the actual word is in uh, verse 22. But let's, let's, go, let's go ahead and read it. Verse 21, But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. Verse 22, Then he finished talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. Verse 23, So Abraham took Ishmael, his son, all who were born in his house, all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of uh, Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin that very same day, as God has said to him. So when God goes up from Abraham, went up from Abraham, the heart of Abraham, as we've covered before in previous classes, went up as well, was turned above unto the sun as well, was directed yet once again unto Christ as well. After God brings his son Christ into view, of course, right here with the testimony, it's Isaac. Isaac who testifies of the true son, the true heir, the true heir. That's the word. I was going to say inheritor, the heir. The true beloved of the Father. Okay? The heart submitted once again unto the knowledge of God. That's why it says that very same day, Abraham circumcised the flesh of their foreskin. That very same day. Day, the knowledge of God above, night, the ignorance of man below. All right, so the next, the next verse where we find uh, this word, Allah, Strong's number 5927, went up. It's three verses together and grouped together. And I, uh, I didn't quite know... I included them because it's the last the last verse that really got my attention, but <clears throat> I went ahead and included the others as well. This is Genesis chapter 19, verse 15. When the morning dawned, and the word right there is translated dawned, when the morning went up, when the day dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise. Take your wife and your daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. Of course, this is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, when the morning dawned, the Lord hasn't put anything on my heart concerning that verse, so we're going to leave it. But that's another verse where, where that term uh, went up, shows up. No pun on the word up. Um, Genesis chapter 19, still in Genesis chapter 19, now this is verse 28. Then he took, or excuse me, then he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And I believe that is Abraham. I didn't look at the context of this. Whoops. Yeah. And Abram went early in the morning. I'm reading verse uh, 27. Genesis chapter 19, verse 27, the one verse before it. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land in the plain. And he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land which went up. There's our term, Allah, like the smoke of a furnace. So there's smoke going up. Of course, this is not a fragrant an aroma, a fragrant aroma of Christ. This is more of the stench of humanity, the stench of Adam, I would say. That which is, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, it, 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 it's, a not, it's not a pleasant uh, aroma. All right, so now, <laughs> I'll just leave it there. So now this is Genesis, uh, and just my brothers and sisters, we who are born again, Think, think about it. I'll just, I'll just take you real quick, beginning to end. Before we were born again, our souls were captive in the Adamic bondage. Nothing fragrant before God. 
nothing of beauty before God. Now, before God, my brothers and sisters, of course, before man, man loves himself. <laughs> but concerning God, concerning the creator of heaven and earth, concerning the Almighty, nothing, God cannot even look upon it. Foul stench. This is what we were. The moment of new birth, my brothers and sisters, God in His tender mercy and ever-bounding grace changes that condition of our soul by bringing to our soul, causing our soul to be able to receive the one who is accepted, the one who is a fragrant aroma unto Him, the one who is the pleasure of His heart, the one in whom He continually delights, brings this one, places this one in our soul. And because this one is in our soul, my brothers and sisters, our soul is now found in life. Our soul is now found before the face of God in Christ Jesus. Our soul is now found once again accepted in the Beloved. And I say once again because I mentioned it earlier in the class, not once again like once we were accepted. No, 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 no. We were never accepted of God before Christ appeared in our souls, my brothers and sisters. There was nothing, there was nothing that God looked upon and said, yes, oh yes, I love that. No, no, no. Look at the example with Sodom and Gomorrah. No, he took it out of the way. He brought that condition that was bound in that condition. They could not escape that condition. He brought that very condition to an end, judged it in the person of his son. Not only that, buried it out of his sight to not have to look upon it anymore. And in the whole same one final swoop, he opens a door that the soul of man may receive the one, Christ himself, the Son of God, whom the soul was created for. Once having received this one, my brothers and sisters, the soul is now accepted in the Beloved. The soul is now found as one being very rich, whether the heart recognizes it, acknowledges it, knows it, or not. God the Father knows. This he does in his mercy. A fragrant, and, then, and then the Apostle Paul goes on to say, you know, to the one we are an aroma of death unto death. The one who's not born again? Well, it's an aroma of death unto death because it's bringing that condition in knowledge unto where it came in reality unto death. Well, no one wants to go there, but unto the other of life unto life. For the one who has life unto the knowledge of the life that they have. For us who are born again, but unto God, a sweet fragrance of Christ. This is his knowledge, my God. My, my brothers and sisters, this is God's knowledge of his Son being diffused in every place. This is unto God. Let me, let me, let me just look at that real quick. I'll read the verse. See if I can find it. Looking at a different translation here that I'm not used to. Let's see what I pull up. I know it's the Apostle Paul, and I think it's in Corinthians. Yes. I'll go ahead and mark that. Where is it? This is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse. I love this. It 
See, you have to begin with verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us, through us who are, whose hearts are being directed by the Spirit of God and being brought in knowledge by the Spirit of God above to behold this one, this person, and through us diffuses the fragrance. He does this, not man. The fragrance of his knowledge in every place. See, that's the context of everything right here. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ as God diffuses his very own knowledge of his Son. A pleasing aroma among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death to death and to the other the aroma of life to life. And who is sufficient for these things? Verse 16, my brothers and sisters, no man. God and God alone is the sufficiency, not man. Remember Genesis chapter 17, the eternal, not I, but Christ. It's like God finally in the heart of Abraham, or Abram at the time, then brings him to Abraham, finally just makes known to such a degree that there's a huge X upon man. No hope whatsoever in man. And all hope placed upon whom it rightfully belongs, Christ and Christ alone. All right. Uh, Genesis chapter 19, this is verse 30. Then Lot went up. There's our word, Allah, went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters with him were with him. And there is, I, 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 as a comment, I put, I put right here, well, I'll go ahead and finish reading. For he was afraid to dwell in Zor, Zor and he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. Okay, and here's just my comment. Uh, with man, uh, where there's a true, there's also a false. And what I mean by that is basically this. God and everything of God naturally, by, by nature, goes up, arises, rises above. Of course, man can try to rise above by his own ability, but this is not of God, but of man. And see, when Lot went up out of Zoar, he dwelt in the mountains with his two daughters with him. But why? For he was afraid. There you have it. That's the ability of man, moved, motivated by fear. But my brothers and sisters, the perfect love of God casts out all fear. The one knowing this one, who Christ the Son of the living God is, there is no fear in perfect love, my brothers and sisters. Fear is cast out when the perfect love of God is being known. Remember? The order, God giveth, and God taketh away. But here, Lot was just simply afraid. So he's, he's abiding somewhere, but it's not truly above. Maybe it's above in his mind, but remember once again, man, I'll read my tweet coming up, man at his greatest potential is still impotence in the sight of God. Man, also, by his greatest knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, is still ignorance, gross ignorance and darkness in the sight of God. Maybe not to man, who sees himself as something exalted, but unto God, there's only one who is exalted, my brothers and sisters, and that is Christ his Son. So, for he was afraid to dwell in Zoar, and he and his two daughters, listen to this, dwelt in a cave. 
Have you ever read that? It, this is the first time I, well, not right now, but just in going over the notes, it's like, oh my gosh, they dwelt in a cave hidden from the light. So obviously, Lot's going up was not as Abram's going up. Lot's going up was the going up of man, man's ability, man's rising from whatever unto a literal higher plane of humanity, which still comes so far short, short and below Christ, does not reach to the heavens, does not reach to the knowledge of God, because with man, brothers and sisters, it is forever eternally impossible. There's, there's much that has happened in the heart of Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 that the Lord has established in his own mercy. Abraham can take no credit for this whatsoever. So <clears throat> our next passage is uh, Genesis chapter 22. This is basically the, the testing of Abraham's faith. And the word, the term is found, I'm trying to find the verse, in verse 2. And I'll start uh, just reading with verse 1 through 5. Now it came to pass after these things that God, now Genesis chapter 22, okay, uh, this, the passage with Lot we were reading was Genesis chapter 19. We're looking at Genesis chapter 22. <coughs> Excuse me. And just remember, uh, with Lot, Lot chose outside of the land, but Abram continued in the land. Okay? So here's Abraham, uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am, verse 2. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac. Basically, the one God himself gave to be a testimony of, who testifies of, the true only begotten. The greater than Isaac. Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Offer him there as a burnt offering. Offer him, may he rise above as a burnt offering. And brothers and sisters, once again, Isaac is a testimony of Christ, the one whom God the Father himself offered right here in the cross as a burnt offering who rose unto God, accepted of God a worthy and only acceptable sacrifice. It goes on. I love this. Uh, I won't read the whole passage. Uh, well, yeah, I will. <laughs> we have a little bit of time. We're, we're, we're running a little close to the hour, but I'll go ahead and read anyway. Um, and go to, the Mount, go to Mount Moriah and offer, there's our word, Allah, him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. And I'm wondering if Allah, no, that was burnt offering. Sorry. Uh, verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And that was very specific. We've already covered this. Two of his young men, witnesses of the resurrection, and his son. And he split the wood uh, for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place which God had told him, the place of which God had told him. Verse 4, then, I love this, <clears throat> the third day, very significant, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw 
the place afar. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, the lad and I, that means the father declaring I and the son, will go yonder and worship and will and we will come back to you. This he declares in faith. Now, verse uh, 6 through 8, that was verse 5 going on with verse 6 through 8, another little portion right here. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his on Isaac his son. We've already covered this, but it's a beautiful testimony of Christ bearing uh, his own the cross. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them, the two of them went together. Verse 7, but Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Verse 8, because something has already been established in the heart of Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, when God makes himself known as, reveals himself as El Shaddai, the all-powerful, almighty, only able, only capable, only powerful, only uh, almighty, only able, one, God. Verse 8, and Abram said, my son, God, you just triple underline that word, God will provide for himself the lamb. That which God requires, that which God desires, and that which God requires, God and God alone, my brothers and sisters, must realize. We have to come to understand this at some point. With man, once again, it is forever, eternally impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. And so our last section of the passage is verses 9 through 14. Then they, verse 9, then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar. Look at that. Built an altar there and placed the wood in order. I love that, the wood in order and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the, upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand. Of course, at this point, his son is not fighting. His son is not resisting. His son is submitted unto the will of his father. What governs the heart of Isaac, Isaac's heart is submitted unto the eternal mind of God. And basically, you could hear, you can almost hear Isaac saying, not my will, but thy will be done. And so, <clears throat> right here, And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So, so he said, Here I am. Verse 12, And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Verses, holy reverence, versus you fearing the loss of that which you have considered, which you have thought was life. Remember with, uh, with Abram taking his household down to Egypt? There was a famine in the land, my brothers and sisters, a famine. And once again, Abram looked around, looked at what he saw with the natural eye, judged by the natural scene, considered in his natural mind, his natural brain, and said, hmm, to preserve life, what he was beholding and considering as life, he said, to, to preserve life, we must go down to Egypt. No. No. What he was beholding indeed was not life. Because life is not beheld by a natural eye, my brothers and sisters. Life is beheld by the eye of the soul, by the eye of the heart, by the eye of the understanding as the heart is being directed by the Holy Spirit above unto the person of Christ himself, who is, listen, the only life there is. For now I know that you fear God, no longer fearing the loss of what is truly not life. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Verse 13, then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. I love that. 
just the order of the words, lifted, it, lifted his eyes and looked. Of course, he looked with the natural eyes, my, but my brothers and sisters, right here, it is the eyes of the heart, the eyes of the understanding, the eyes of the soul, because what he beholds is a testimony of Christ. And there behind him, can't you hear the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos? I heard a voice that spake with me, and I turned to see the voice. And there behind him a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. And there you have the crown of thorns upon our Savior. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Offered the ram up, the one God himself provided. Verse 14, And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord that is in the mount above. This is the true above of the Lord. It shall be provided. All provision, all that which is needed, is found, my brothers and sisters, in a person. is eternally present in a person. Whether we acknowledge it, whether we realize it, whether we are aware of it or not, everything has been provided in the person of the Son, Christ Jesus himself. This our God has done, has made it so simple for us, my brothers and sisters, so simple. And yet man complicates things so easily. That is all that we do. That is all that we do. That is all that man does is complicate things. But God does not. God does not. And God has made it very singular, very simple and very singular, all to be found in the person of his Son. So <clears throat> that's all I had for this class. God and everything of God rises above. Please present everything to the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit, would, who is our true teacher, would take that which he desires to take, use it for God's own end, God's own purpose, God's own will. Amen? Amen. Lord bless you. We'll see you in our next class. Amen.